what would life be if the government wasn't constantly trying to be your mother? What would life be if people weren't trying to use the force and authority of the government to control your life? Well, why did people freak out and attempt to use the government to enforce their personal values about what risks you should and shouldn't take with your own body? Because there was some controversy with e-cigarettes. Why? Because it's a flavorful way of acquiring nicotine without the bad side effects of all the chemicals that they put into conventional cigarettes. It might entice teens and young adults to begin this new fad of vaping. Basically, what they're saying is, let's regulate this less dangerous alternative to actual smoking because, you know, through laws and regulation, other people get to have some control over your body, diet, hobbies, and habits, even if they don't affect other people. But that's the world we live in. A study from Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center has released a new study that finds that e-cigarette use could do more harm than good by substantially increasing the number of adolescents and young adults who eventually become cigarette smokers and marginally decreasing the number of adult cigarette smokers who quit. Yes, people have vices. That's one of the unfortunate things about having freedom, about having choice. People will make decisions and dabble in substances that give them a rush of dopamine. But let's not ignore the good that e-cigs do. They are a safer alternative to smoking. Vaping might not help people lean off of nicotine like coffee or caffeine pills won't lean people off of caffeine but it can help you decrease the amount of soda and energy drinks that you consume, which is a good thing. Sure, they might, they, they may be more guilt-free methods to get your vice of choice, but they are better. Now, you may be asking, what are you going on about? Nearly a dozen U.S. Senators who have urged the Food and Drug Administration to immediately ban some Juul e-cigarette flavors are getting support from the campaign for tobacco-free kids. So because these nicotine products that are filled with flavor might be appealing to kids, we must punish people by limiting their choices. Fantastic. And could somebody point out, does, does anybody else see what I see? The campaign for tobacco-free kids is wanting to regulate tobacco-free nicotine products. But, you know, that's besides the point. The promise of safer nicotine delivery to the 38 million cigarette users in this country, that's after 2 million already quit thanks to vaping, isn't good enough to prevent people from freaking out. Unfortunately, nothing is perfect. That sucks. I wish everything was perfect. But understand that people making decisions with their own bodies shouldn't be something that, encourage us, that encourages us to use the law, to use taxpayer dollars, to use law enforcement, to use the threat of legal fees and fines, or jail time to enforce our cultural and personal opinions. Would I prefer a world where less people use nicotine? Yes, absolutely. And would I prefer a world where people get nicotine from safer sources? Yes, absolutely. Do I want to use the law to threaten people not to buy or sell certain flavors or products? No. That's ridiculous. That's more ridiculous than actually having a nicotine addiction. Yes, it's true. All these flavors make it enticing for non-nicotine users to try nicotine. But nicotine isn't alcohol. And nicotine isn't meth. And nicotine isn't marijuana. Nicotine is relatively safe in moderation. Plus, if someone wanted to try some nicotine, what would you rather have them try? A vape pen or a cigarette? You decide.